got a black magic wand. Got a black magic wand. I got a black magic woman. Got me so blind I can't see. I got a black magic woman. She's gonna make me Don't turn your back on me, baby. Don't turn your back on me, baby. Back on me, baby. Stop fooling around with your tricks. Don't turn your back on me, baby. You might just pick up my magic sticks. Hey, how you doing, Justin? Here today we are checking out one of the all-time pop blues classics. It is, of course. Black Magic Woman. Now, I'm going to be showing you the Fleetwood Mac version and the Carlos Santana version. All of the kind of the parts that you need to put it together, but you're going to have to listen to the original recordings as well to be able to feel out the form of the tune. So let's start off with the Fleetwood Mac version. Now, the very first chord is a D minor chord right up the dusty end. So it's kind of this regular D minor A shaped bar chord, uh, but we're just playing the thinnest three strings and up 12 frets. So first finger is going to be on the thinnest string at the 17th fret. Uh, second finger will be in the 18th fret on the second string and third finger will be on the 19th fret of the third string. You want quite a lot of reverb and, and possibly even a bit of vibrato on that chord as well. Um, to get a nice vibrato for me I have to lift my thumb off. For some reason I, I struggle to keep the thumb around the back of the neck there doing that. Maybe it's just this guitar because it's a bit cramped up there anyway. But um, if I'm going to do any vibrato I want my thumb kind of right off using my whole arm to get the vibrato on the chord. So that's the very first uh, little chord that you hear. Then you hear a snare drum hit on beat one. And that's the cue for a uh, got, got a black magic woman. OK, the chord progression, relatively simple. We've got two bars of D minor. Now you could play it up here as well, but D minor, you're probably going to want to do them as bar chords for reasons that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, and then A minor for two bars, D minor for two bars, and then G minor for two bars. Right? And that's the, all of that is the same between the Fleetwood Mac and the Santana version. It's this next little section that's a bit different on, on each one. The Fleetwood Mac version, we have D minor for two beats, C for two beats, B flat for two beats, and A major, I think it's major, for two beats. Okay, so black magic woman, she's gonna make a devil. And then we've got this other little run. So straight after the rundown, D minor, C, B flat, A, D minor. Now the it's a D minor on beat one. Then straight away on beat two, we're going to use the third finger on the eighth fret of the second string tone bend. And we, we release it again, an eighth note later. One, two, and th beat three is going to be the sixth fret of the second string. Now I'd recommend using your second finger now on the seventh fret of the third string. It'll roll over to play seventh fret on the uh, fourth string, third finger to play the eighth fret of the fifth string. And then if you're going to play all of these parts as one guitar, you almost certainly want to be using an open D because that'll give you time to get up to that chord again. Okay, quite likely on the original version, it's two guitar parts, so it would have been Maybe even up here. I'm not really sure which which uh, part of the neck that li particular lick was played in. I think seems to sound more like it to me, um, but maybe without the open string. So I suspect is what one guitar is playing and the other one does the. Okay, um, the uh, the la the last note of that riff. So one, two, and three, and four, and one. Two is that chord, and then there's a snare drum hit on beat one again. So that whole part, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, whack. Got a black magic woman. Obviously, that's quite a lot slower than the original one, but it's really important that you get that count right. So when you add that in, the Fleetwood Mac version becomes a 13-bar blues, 
okay because of that extra little gap with the with the high chord and the snare drum and Carlos Santana just loses that so it becomes a, a much more standardized 12 bar blues which is something you'd need to talk about if you were jamming it in a band like doing a you know at a jam night you'd need to decide whether you were doing it as a 13 bar blues or as a standard 12 bar blues because that's that's the biggest difference between the the Fleetwood Mac version um, and the Santana one uh, later in the Fleetwood Mac version, it's an even longer gap, okay, because it gets a, a little bit trippy. Um, again, that's something that you can just listen out for if you just count along and you can count how many bars gap there is. Um, and it changes a couple of times in the tune. So let me take you through that now. I'm just going to play it through with real straight strumming, just strumming on the downbeats, the one, two, three, and the four, so you can see how the form of that all fits, and then we'll talk about the strumming. So um, we got here, one, two, three, four, one. <coughs> Got a black magic woman Got a black magic A minor for two bars I got a D minor woman for two bars And then we go to G minor We got D minor to C to B flat Then to A and then to D two, three, four, and it would be the same thing again. Okay, so that's the, the basic framework for the, for the strumming, uh, sorry, for the chord progression. Now to talk about the strumming. Um, it's pretty hard to hear exactly what's being strummed, to be honest, on the, on the Fleetwood Mac version. I think it's this. which is a really nice strumming pattern any way to check out, but it wouldn't really matter. The Santana one's a little bit freer again, uh, but that would be a nice one to start off with. So it's 16th note strumming, so 16 arm movements in the bar. You want to try and keep that consistent. Uh, the strumming pattern I'm using is one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and. So I'm adding in just one 16th note, one up strum, okay? One and a there then two and three and four and so I'm not playing on beat three, okay? One and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and down, down, up, down, down, miss, up, down, 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 up, down, down, miss, up, down, 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 down. I keep wanting to say up, down, down, but it's not down, 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 up, down, down, miss, down, 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 up, down, down, miss, down, down. Doing that sort of practice where you're just muting the chords is really valuable, so definitely something to check out. Then when you apply it, first of all, I'd muck around with just holding the whole chord down. Just stay on the one chord until you're feeling confident with the rhythm. So one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and four and down, down, up, down, down. Okay, so spend a bit of time just working on that. One thing that I really like about this particular kind of pattern is lifting the chord a little bit as well. It makes it a lot more percussive and there's a lot more different things you can do. Again, it's not specifically what's on the record, but I think it's worth you experimenting with it. So like having a... Um So just by kind of pressing the chord down and get these nice little tight chords. So that's one of the things that I experiment when I'm playing this song myself is, is finding a little groove that works well with the drums and the bass there where I might be doing it, you know, at least a couple of lifts to give it some sort of rhythmic interest. Uh, paying attention not to overplay it and then um, upset the groove of things with, uh, with the, whoever's playing the solos or with the rest of the band. So um, the same thing works. Um, I think what I do. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 down. I think that would be a kind of a nice. Uh, just keeping it real simple. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, down, down. Because you probably want to be playing on beat three for that. Uh, corporate that little uh, section because the, there's a chord change on beat three. Um, the, 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 probably the trickiest part is going to be negotiating away from that A chord to the D minor and then straight into the lick and then straight up the neck 
if you're going to play that section, that'll be the, probably the technically the most challenging part of that rhythm uh, section. So let's take it through. I'll take that rhythm through now through that whole um, chord progression. Here we go from the D minor. Three, four. <laughs> just doing a slide down there where the drum would normally do the hit you wouldn't have to put that slide in but they, you know so you get the feeling of the where the hit would be and then the vocal would come in after that the other part that's very different on the Fleetwood Mac version is this whole little kind of end section where it goes into a shuffle uh, groove there's a and again some more wonderful guitar work from Greeny there um, I don't think the bass notes played on the original one, but I tend to put it in anyway on beat one. The, the thumb is reaching over to play the 10th fret of the thickest string. Then first finger is playing the thinnest two strings. Then first finger is doing a 10th uh, fret on the fifth string. Third finger hammers on to the 12th fret on, also on the fifth string. Then first finger is moved over to the 10th fret on the fourth string. Back to the 12th fret on the 5th string, then 10th fret, 12th fret on the 4th string. Really, really nice little uh, groove. It's just a vamp on that then. Um, That's going to be a hard. That's too hard. That's in the too hard for me to count out basket. Okay, just listen to it. Have a listen to the original recording and, and cop that one because it's a little bit, uh, bit too sticky for me to count out uh, properly. So. I think that's enough of the Fleetwood one. Just have a listen to it, go through and kind of put the pieces together and make sure that you can play through the whole tune. It's a really, really good exercise. Uh, Santana's version, there's a little bit more vamping going on. So the solos are usually over this kind of 12 bar form, which I'll go into uh, in a little bit more detail in a second and explain the chords. Um, but there's a lot of parts where it's just a vamp on D minor as well. So it'll just stay on the D minor. And there's sections where it's like, oh, it's going to be consistent here. But actually, it's, it's not so the rhythm parts, as far as like a strumming pattern goes, is, is not really there. It's uh, um, a lot of experimenting and kind of fills. And the, the grooves are held down by the rest of the band, not the rhythm guitar part. OK, so you're a little bit freer with this one to experiment with some of the chords, which is really nice. Um, the basic sequence, as I said, it's a 12 bar blues. So you ha still have the little hit with the pickup line of the vocal. So, dong, got a black magic woman. Okay, and then that we're starting the chord sequence D minor, D minor, A minor, A minor, D minor, D minor, G minor, G minor. So exactly the same as the Fleetwood one. But then it goes D minor, A minor, D minor, D minor again, but with a stop. Okay, so, got a black magic D minor. Got a black magic A minor for two bars. I got a D minor woman, got me so blind I can G minor. Then I got D minor for one bar and A minor for one bar. Then back to D minor for a bar and then stop. I'm gonna black on me, baby. And it's the same sequence. So it's a lot more standardized as a 12 bar blues. It's probably much more common to have that kind of arrangement in a jam night. Aside from the fact that a lot of people seem to think that the Santana version was the original one anyway. Um, that is kind of the more popular form. It's 12 bar blues, a lot simpler to, to kind of deal with, I guess. Um, as far as the rhythms go, the rhythm that I explained for the uh, Fleetwood Mac version would definitely work. As I mentioned there, there's a few parts of the song where it feels like, oh, it's going to pick up and be this consistent rhythm pattern, but it's much more, there's a lot more experimenting going on. Um, definitely with a D minor, you can do things like lift off the little finger so that you've got a D minor seven. You can add that little finger down on the eighth fret of the thinner string. It's a really nice little variation. A minor, you can again, A minor, you can lift off little finger, 
to get an A minor 7 you can also add it back down on the 8th fret of the 2nd string very nice version of an A minor 7 D minor again to G minor you can hear kind of Hendrixy style licks there on the G minor as well which is nice um, it's the same yeah one thing with the D minor actually particularly with D minor 7 hammering the second and third fingers down it's a really nice and So you can straight away, it it's a, becomes a bit more of a kind of a free jammy thing rather than having a, a very specific pattern. It's quite nice, the simplification as well at the end of just having the D minor, A minor, D minor stop, I think is, it works better as an improvised kind of a jammy tune than having the D minor C, B flat A. It's a, it's a very common kind of a blues turnaround, I guess, to have, but harmonically it means that you have to be a little bit more careful with what you play if you're going to make the chord changes particularly it's a little bit more challenging um the 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 other thing with the quirk with the santana even though fleetwood's got that uh, you know that kind of shuffle groove that happens toward the end the santana there's quite a lot of bits where it's just d minor right the, for the what there's a, a keyboard solo in the intro which is all just a d minor chord and then it picks up again later in the song where it just stays on the d minor and you can hear again if you listen clearly you'll hear there are kind of riffs to me it was like well i, want, I wanted him to keep doing that riff because it was so strong but he does this really strong statement and then he goes off onto another really strong statement He's got, you know fantastic guitar player santana but for me he could have on this song he could have stuck with some of those really strong bits and repeated them more but i mean you know those things really stopped at being a massive worldwide hit hey you know so i should definitely teach santana a thing or two about songwriting yeah right um you know it anyway if you're playing it yourself in a covers band you might want to think about having some kind of repeated motif ideas or things that you do consistently or you leave the the, the strong rhythm groovy stuff to other people in the band and, and you experiment with uh, with what you play and try out some of these other different chord grips and stuff um, you could definitely always remember that you could be playing your d minor up here and your a minor right i mean that's pretty far up the dusty end but it still works particularly here the, the uh, g minor works nice really you know there's there's no set rules especially if you're trying to treat these songs as a kind of a jammy thing which is really why i would if i was encouraging you to learn a song for a reason you should either learn it because you love fleetwood mac or you love santana or you're looking for a cool minor blues that you can pull out at a jam night or play with your buddies you know and in that last circumstance it doesn't really matter what you play you should experiment and learn to use these songs as a kind of a vehicle for your own guitar playing development that's what I would recommend. That's why I learned songs like this anyway, to try and make myself a better general guitar player. Please do remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. And remember, all of this stuff is organized over on the website. So if you want some additional information about playing your minor pentatonics or doing your string bending or whatever, all of those lessons are going to be really easy to find if you're checking out the songs over on the website. You can search them by uh, difficulty as well, which is really useful, and by the most recent ones or by the artist or whatever. There's a lot of different uh, filters you can use to find the right song for you to check out next. So hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.